it's almost time to start building our React and Redux application. Before we go ahead and start using React and Redux together, I just want to go ahead and create our project structure together so you can see where you would normally have React and Redux files and how you would separate them out. So if we look at this diagram, it should be fairly familiar to you. We have our Redux actions, middleware, reducers, and our store. But we're now going to introduce React. And if you're at all familiar with React, you will know that React has a concept of dumb components and smart components. Now, smart components contain the application state and dumb components contain no state. They just render whatever they are passed. This diagram is actually gonna help us structure our React and Redux project. So we're gonna separate out our actions, our containers, and our DOM components, as well as our store and reducers. Now we have a rough idea of what our project structure is gonna look like. It's time to create it. So you can see here, currently we have our source and our styles with our webpack setup and our index.html. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is within our source folder, I'm going to create a few directories. I'm gonna create an actions directory, which is obviously going to contain our Redux actions. I'm going to create a components directory, which is gonna contain our React components, our dumb components. I'm then gonna create a containers directory, which will contain our smart components that have state. And finally, we're gonna have a reducers directory. Go ahead and create those. So we now have all the folders that we need within our project. The next thing to do is to go ahead and create a store.js file. So touch store.js. And that is gonna contain our Redux store. We can now go ahead and start to break out our index.js and the code within it into our separate files so that we can start to use React and Redux together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our Redux store into our store.js file. Now that's actually fairly easy. We just need to get the store from our index.js file, cut that out, open up our store.js file and place that in. Now we do need to do a few things. Firstly, we need to export default because we're actually going to export our store. And let's go ahead and break this into separate lines to make it much easier to read. Okay, so with our store all formatted, we're gonna go ahead and import the required apply middleware, create store, Redux logger, and Redux promise middleware, as we need these in our store. We can go ahead and steal these from our index.js file. And with that done, our Redux store is basically ready. Obviously it's not gonna work at the moment and this is just kind of boilerplating out our Redux application. The next thing we can do is we can go ahead and separate our user reducer into a separate file. So if we create a new file within our reducers folder called user.js, we can go ahead and import that straight away into our store. So import user reducer from and it's at the same level in the reducers folder and it's user. And I of course need quotes around that. So once we add our user reducer into that folder, we're gonna import it into our store as you'd expect. To add it to our user file, we're just gonna go ahead and cut out our entire reducer down to there and paste that into our user folder. Now what we need to do here is we just need to export default and we're gonna export our user reducer. So we can now import that into our store correctly. And that's all we need for our reducer. The next thing we can do is we can tidy up a lot of code in our index.js that we no longer need. We can get rid of all of this code here. We can get rid of that store comment there as well. And we can get rid of our 
dispatches as well. Now what we've got left here is simply our dispatch of our action to our store, our fetch user action and the Axios import. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy these out and create create a new file in our actions folder called user.js and we're just going to paste those in get rid of that new line okay so rather than store.dispatch as obviously we don't have a store here anymore and we don't have a dispatch either go ahead and delete those the next thing we need to do here is we just need to export default and it's going to be a function and we'll call this function fetch users. Bring that onto a new line, make sure that's spelled correctly. And we're simply going to return an object as you'd expect for a Redux action that has a type and a payload. And that payload is obviously our API call. Now this all might change, but this is just kind of the basic structure. So don't worry too much about the code itself. So if you save that and head on back over to index.js, it should be empty now, which is what we want. With our index.js empty and the rest of our Redux application split out into separate parts, we can just go ahead and tidy up our index.html quickly by deleting all the unused code. And rather than having a class of container, we'll have an ID of app. And with all that done, we can go ahead and we can install the dependencies we need for React and React Redux to work together. In your terminal, npm install dash dash save, and we're going to install React, React dash DOM, and React dash Redux. So React is obviously the React code. React DOM is what renders our React code into the DOM, and React Redux is what brings React and Redux together. Because if you remember, obviously, as we've been previously doing, you can use Redux by itself with plain JavaScript. You could also use it with Angular, Angular 2, Vue, whatever you want to use it. And so when you want to use it with React, you have to use React Redux. And that just wires React together with Redux. Go ahead and install those. With all the dependencies installed, we can go ahead and just boilerplate out a simple React component or two so that in the next video, we can actually wire React and Redux together and see how that all works. So in our index.js, let's go ahead and import the render function from React, from React DOM, import react itself from react and we're going to import main from dot slash components and we'll create that component in a minute so all we're going to do here is we're simply going to render and we're going to pass in our component and then document dot get element by ID and we'll pass in the ID of app and that's the ID in our index.html that we changed earlier and the final thing we need to do before we can move on to actually building our react components and wiring in redux is just create our main.js file and within this file let's go ahead and import react from react and we'll simply just export default and this is just going to be a simple stateless functional component, a, a dumb component. And it's simply going to render a div and we'll just pass in a h1 of hello. Close that off. Close that div off and format that. And with that, everything we need to do is done. So we can go ahead and npm start and this should hopefully start up our webpack server and provided I've not done anything wrong, which I have apparently. Uh, so unexpected token main and I have remembered why. So we're missing one more dependency. So if you go ahead and npm install babel-preset-react 
and save that. So that preset is just a preset to tell Babel that we're going to be using JSX essentially. And with that installed, go ahead and open up your .babelrc and let's pass in that Babel dash preset dash react. Save that, head on back over to your terminal, npm start. That's going to go ahead and start up our Webpack server. It's going to bundle valid correct, which is great and open up Chrome, refresh, and you'll see we have our hello. So our simple React application is working now. So if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll catch you in the next video.